Hi, I'm Victoria Neely. I'm here to talk about nonprofits. You know all the great work that nonprofits are doing in your community, but until you've been on the inside, you really don't have the whole picture. So I'm going to talk about some things that go on in nonprofits. It's never boring working for a nonprofit. Your day changes from the minute you walk in the door. Staff meetings and for meetings and with counseling with clients, but what really happens that day is going to be totally different. Emergencies come up, things need to happen, and things need taken care of. You're at your desk, you're writing your thank you letters, and then you get the call. The client's in the house and her AC is not working, and of course, it's 90 degrees outside. You call the repairman, it'll be two days before he gets there. Now you need to drop everything, find a hotel to put the family in for two days, and make sure this all happens you know, during the midst of your day. And then the next issue comes up. You get a call from the life skills counselor. She's sorry, but her kid has strep, so she won't be able to teach class tonight. You have three hours to find a replacement to teach a class on planning and preparation for your clients. So the hotel manager called. He needs 75% deposit up front in order to hold our room and hold our prices for the benefit dinner we planned in two months. And no, he won't give us a discount for being a nonprofit. Let me tell you about my week. Monday after work is the finance committee meeting. Tuesday, of course, is a board meeting, three hours long. Wednesday, I need to go to a presentation by the county on housing. Thursday, I take my work home and do reports. And Friday, I come home exhausted and fall into bed until I realize that it's the next morning, it's Saturday, and I need to go to the volunteer training and make a presentation. I am the face, the voice, and the hands of the nonprofit always reaching out to the community and asking for donations. Let's talk about things. Nonprofits provide valuable services in the community. If only we could focus on our mandate and not have to worry about the bottom line. It's great when people donate things. And people like to donate what they like to donate. Unfortunately, nonprofits run on cash. Donors like to give things. They like to give the things they want to give. However, nonprofits need funding to run. Giving things instead of money means nonprofits have to hire more staff. We have to find more volunteers to accept the donation of things, to clean up the things, to inventory the things, and to get the things out to the clients that need them. However, if we get cash, we can hire staff to run all that, or we can hire staff to find volunteers to gather the things, clean up the things, organize the things, and deliver the things. So again, we're back to nonprofits need money. Then you get the call on a Sunday night at 9 p.m., and the harried voice on the other end goes, my apartment is flooding, what do I do? And so you make the phone call to the repairman and you make the phone call to the trained volunteers and they bring over dry clothes and dry towels and calm her down. And all of this because she couldn't remember where you told her the water shutoff valve was. Let's talk about fundraising. Large nonprofits, you can name a few, DC Central Kitchen, the Red Cross, they have a large donor base, a lot of publicity, and they have a lot of clients that they serve, so they have a lot of success stories to tell. Donors to these large organizations feel more valued because they can see that their money is doing so much more. So let's talk about the smaller nonprofits. Smaller nonprofits run with less overhead, less staff, they do more with less. They have less client stories to tell, and they have less success stories to tell but they're doing one-on-one -on -one with each client. Smaller nonprofits are always striving to grow because if they could just get a little bigger, they could start getting on the radar of some of the larger foundations and get some better funding. Smaller nonprofits work harder for every dollar, but your dollar will make a bigger impact there. Ask me about your tax dollars. The state of Virginia had a budget to make, and so they determined that they were going to reduce the funding for the mental health programs. Where do you think all those clients went? They still needed their counseling, they still needed their meds. Who do you think picked up the slack? I'll give you a hint. A, the jails, B, other nonprofits, C, faith communities, or D, other government programs? The answer is all of the above. Churches and faith communities were already stepping up to the plate and doing a lot for the communities, and they were helping out. And what happens to the counselors or the staff that get these phone calls from mental health clients that had nowhere to turn? We used to know a phone number they could call for services and help. We used to know where to direct them to handle their needs, but those programs don't exist anymore. And these clients didn't fit our program, so we couldn't legally help them. And we had nowhere to turn, so we did rely on, and we do rely on faith communities to step in. We're all trained in what services are available in our communities, and we used to know where to send people. But where do you send someone when there's nowhere to go? Let's talk about how we do things at a nonprofit. So the typical nonprofit client is a single mom who's working, who has kids. She'll get up in the morning, get her kids ready for school. She'll drop them off, and then she takes the bus to work. She works, 
She picks up her kids on aftercare, and then she comes home late at night. Well, during this time, the food bank was only open nine to four. So the food bank for her would be a Saturday, stand in line for three hour visit with her kids in tow. And how is she gonna take this home? The food bank lets you come once a month. So she's got boxes and bags of groceries and she takes the bus. This is really a difficult situation. In this case, a volunteer to pick her up, bring her there, bring her home. That would be an amazing thing. When you give, Ask what impact my dollars will have on the community in need. Not sure? Do your homework. Check out what GuideStar has to say. Check out what Charity Finder has to say about the charity. And see what they have on their website. Do they show you their audited financials? Is your charity based on their need? Find out how your donation will empower their clients. How you choose to donate matters. How you educate, advocate, and empower matters. You know, ask not what your donation of money and time will do for many but ask what impact your donation will have for just one. And thank you for caring enough to donate.